Shabbat Shalom, I'm Rabbi Sarah with our two minutes of Torah. This week our Torah portion is Bo, found in the book of Exodus. Bo is continuing the narrative of the Jews leaving Egypt. It gets its name actually from God telling Moses, Bo, go, go to Pharaoh and demand to let the Israelites go. He does this again. And we find in this parasha three more plagues. We find it the plague of locusts, darkness, and the death of the firstborn. Well, we all know what happens next. Pharaoh finally agrees and says, you can go. And the Israelites begin to leave Egypt. From this, we start a whole process of observing this significant time for the Jewish people. We observe that on the 14th day in the first month, being the first month of Nisan, we observe some kind of Passover, where God passed over the doorposts, saw on our lintels, on the doorposts of our house, a marking and passed over them and did not did not create the death of the firstborn for the Israelites. Instead, God redeemed the Israelites. So what does this mean for us? How do we observe Passover? Well, observing it has changed over the course of years. In the early days, the Seder consisted of the sacrifice of a Paschal lamb or an offering and the marking of the doorposts of the house. Later on, the rabbis added other details to it, including what we know is to be the mamor and the eating of unleavened bread or matzah throughout the entire time. Now we knew about the unleavened bread from the Torah, but what we didn't know is the specifics about emptying all the leavening from our homes. Over time, the Seder has been observed in all sorts of ways. People try different cultural backgrounds. If they're Ashkenazic, they may try a Sephardic style Seder. If they're um, really trying for something different, maybe they go to a women's Seder or a men's Seder or have a Chinese Seder. There are so many ways to see how Sederim are observed across the world. Every family does it a little bit differently. I've participated in the version of Seder that is Jeopardy style based on the fact that we have the four questions asked by the four children. Making your Seder fun and asking questions keeps our tradition alive year after year after year. And a Seder is not just for the children, it's for adults too. So keeping the conversation significant, probing questions like who is oppressed? How can they be redeemed today? Making your Seders real and authentic keeps what happened so long ago in our parasha Bo with us year after year. Our ancestor story is our story. Shabbat Shalom.